What's up my peeps, it is now time for the raw results slash highlights and review video. I'll go over the results, some of the highlights in my opinion, and give you guys my thoughts, my review on the show. So it kicks off with Dean Ambrose coming out, cutting a promo. He basically says that he wants nothing more than Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell so he can pummel him and make Seth Rollins regret that he even met Dean Ambrose, that he even knows of the name Dean Ambrose. So anyways, he goes on to talk about Seth Rollins and how he has to go through Cena first, and that's like stressing him out or something like that. And then John Cena's music hits, and uh, they start arguing, and Cena you know, tells him to stop talking and to prepare for their for the matchup at Hell in a Cell. I think he called it Dean Ambrose's biggest challenge yet, or biggest match yet. And then Dean Ambrose, you know, uh, says some more words to Cena, then Cena pretty much challenges uh, Ambrose to take a shot at him and tells him, you know, I'll show you why I'm a 15-time world champion. But before they fight, the authority comes out. And actually before Triple H and Stephanie came out, John Cena for a second uh, looked back like somebody was coming out or something like that. Because the crowd was, for, for some reason, the crowd started cheering uh, out of nowhere. And that's when Cena like turned around, but you know, there was no music, there wasn't anybody coming out, or at least the camera didn't pan to the stage, so I'm not sure if Cena just thought Triple H was going to come out at that moment, or because the crowd was chanting that maybe Triple H came out, but then went back, went to the back, and then he came back out, I don't know, anyway, so the authority's music hits, and uh, Cena turns around once again, and then Stephanie announces that they'll be in tag team action tonight, Ambrose and Cena. And then Triple H is like, what, these two, you know, they can't get along, they'll beat each other up. And then Stephanie says, no, I feel like they're too scared to beat each other up. And then they go ahead and, like, make a bet, Triple H bets that, you know, they're, they'll fight each other before, you know, um, I guess going into the tag team match. Or, you know, they'll end up, you know, fighting. And then Stephanie says, you know, she bets that they won't fight. So they shake hands, make a bet. And then they put Ambrose and Cena in a triple threat tag team match against Stardust and Goldust and the team of the Usos. And that match is next. So then Stardust and Goldust come out, followed by the Usos, and then the match starts. Cena and Ambrose actually don't end up fighting in the matchup. I mean, at some point in the match, Cena did jump from the top turnbuckle on everybody on the outside. You know, the Usos and Stardust and Goldust. And then after that, Ambrose jumped from the top turnbuckle onto... You know, both the opposing teams, so the Usos, Goldust, and Stardust, but also John Cena. So, that's as far, pretty much, as they got in regards to fighting each other. But, uh, anyways, shortly after, John Cena hit the attitude adjustment on Stardust and covered him for the win. And then after the match, the authority comes back out, and Triple H says, Alright, you know, Stephanie won the bet, so he actually just gives him one dollar. And then he says, you know, he doesn't like losing bets. So, you know, he says, you know, maybe... They need to do something, you know, for Ambrose and Cena to fight. So what he does is he says, why wait until Hell in a Cell for the contract on the pole match? So he makes the match for tonight. No holds barred. Contract on a pole. Dean Ambrose versus John Cena. And then after that, it was a tag team divas match. Paige and Alicia Fox versus AJ and her new partner. And this time it was Layla. And then they showed like a video package. Not a video package, but like a promo that AJ cut earlier where she said pretty much that she doesn't like any of the divas, but Layla's the one she dislikes the least. And then Layla kind of, you know, uh, signals for a hug, and then AJ hugs her, but, you know, uh, it's obvious both of them don't like each other. So, as far as the match goes, it ends when Layla actually tries to do what AJ did to Emma last week. She tries to get off the apron and just leave, ditch AJ, and that distracts AJ just for a little bit, uh, allowing Alicia Fox to hit AJ, but eventually AJ just hits the Shining Wizard on Alicia Fox and wins the match. After the match is over, AJ goes right ahead, right after Layla, she grabs her, throws her onto the ramp, and throws her onto the barricade twice. And then she grabs her championship, which was in the corner, in the ring, and then leaves. And after that, we get a backstage segment with Triple H, uh, Stephanie McMahon, and Randy. And pretty much, Randy is asking uh, for a match against whoever doesn't get a match with Seth Rollins. He says that, you know, Dean Ambrose, John Cena, they can beat Seth Rollins any day of the week, but they can't beat him. So, what he wants is a match, not just any match, but a Hell in a Cell match against the loser of the contract on the pool match. So, Triple H gives him the match, and then Randy leaves, 
And that's about it. Following that, it was time for Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton, and this ended up being a great matchup between the two. Towards the middle of the match, Seth Rollins came out, and he just watched the match from the ramp. Randy didn't look too happy about that, and on commentary, they did point out that maybe Seth Rollins is out there due to Randy's comments earlier when he said that Ambrose and Cena can beat Seth Rollins any day of the week. So, in regards to the matchup, uh, there was a lot of reversals, a lot of counters, it was a really cool matchup, entertaining match. At some point, Randy went for the RKO. Dolph countered it, and then he rolled up Randy. Randy kicked out, and then shortly after, Dolph went for the Fame Acer. Randy countered that, dodged it, but then Dolph went for the jumping DDT. Randy pushed him off towards, towards the ropes, and then I'm not sure if Randy went for something else, but I do know that shortly after that, Dolph connected with a super kick. He covered Randy, but Randy kicked out. Now, the ending of the match came when Dolph went ahead and went for the Fame Acer once again, but Randy caught him in the powerbomb position, and then what he did is he threw Dolph up in the air and caught him in an RKO. Um, after that, he tried to cover Dolph by just, you know, laying flat on Dolph, but the problem was Dolph was laying on his stomach, so he kind of pulled off, <laughs> he kind of did like Cameron a couple days ago, well, not a days ago, but a couple weeks ago when she tried to pin Naomi when Naomi was laying on her stomach. So anyways, uh, he covers Dolph and wins the match. After the match is over, uh, Seth Rollins, not looking too happy that Randy won, he goes ahead, goes inside the ring, and by the way, Seth Rollins uh, was not the only one at ringside because Cesaro was also on commentary, but he didn't really get involved. He was just on commentary. So anyway, Seth Rollins gets inside the ring, and he just looks at Dolph Ziggler, and then he ends up hitting a curb stop on Dolph. And then after that, they go to commercial. Once they come back, it's Seth Rollins versus Jack Swagger. And this time, during this match, Randy comes out on the ramp to watch the match, which also Seth Rollins didn't look too happy about. So anyways, this match also ends up being a really good match. And in the end, Seth Rollins ends up rolling up Jack Swagger and grabbing the trunks, or not the trunks because Swagger doesn't wear trunks, but grabbing the tights. Uh, or the singlet of Swagger uh, to get the three count. And uh, in this match, we actually saw Swagger attempt the gut wrench powerbomb, which we haven't seen in a, in a while from Swagger. At least I haven't seen it in a long time in regards to Swagger. Uh, he didn't actually connect with the Jack Swagger. With, uh, what am I talking about? With the gut wrench powerbomb, he didn't connect with it because Seth Rollins got out of it. And uh, Jack Swagger, on I think two or three occasions, he tried to lock in the Patriot Lock. And he had it for a short time, but Seth Rollins, you know, got into the ropes. So, yeah, Seth Rollins wins the matchup. He didn't win by curb stomp. He rolled up Swagger and, like I said, grabbed the singlet. And then after the match, right after the match, uh, Jack Swagger's, like, complaining to the referee about, you know, or telling to him about Seth Rollins grabbing the tights. And then Randy gets right in the ring, and he turns Swagger around and hits him with an RKO. And then he's like slides right over in, the, in Seth Rollins' face and stares at him. And then Seth Rollins gets up and then they're both face to face exchanging words. And you can hear Seth Rollins saying, you know, you had your time, now it's my time. And the, the crowd is chanting RKO, RKO. And uh, then Seth Rollins just leaves and that's it for that. And then Renee Young interviews Dean Ambrose about his match with Cena tonight. And he says, you know, tonight... Uh, you can expect me uh, not to be a nice guy because I'm not a nice guy. I'm not going to be nice to Cena. And uh, he says, he ends the promo by saying that both John Cena and Seth Rollins are on the highway to hell. And then he leaves. And after that, we get Tom Phillips interviewing the big show about his match with Rusev tonight. And at some point in the interview, uh, big show or Tom Phillips tells him about Mark Henry losing to Rusev. And then Big Show says, no, op no offense to Mark Henry, but, you know, if you're going to put, you know, uh, three, uh, three million, 3.80 million people uh, on your back, you know, you should put them on the back of basically the Big Show. And when he said that, I was like, you know what? I think we might see Mark Henry turn heel here and uh, attack Big Show or cost him the match against Rusev just because of that comment right there. So anyways, he says that after, you know, his match with Rusev on SmackDown a couple weeks back, which ended by DQ, 
you know, he knocked out Rusev. Basically, he says that Rusev has a glass jaw, and tonight he's gonna shatter it. And then Rusev and Lana go out to the ring. They cut a pre-match promo uh, just to get some heat from the crowd. And then Big Show comes out for the matchup. And uh, in the beginning of the match, Big Show was just dominating Rusev. He was beating him up right from the get-go. Like, right when the bell rung, Big Show hits Rusev with a big boot. And then he beat him up also on the outside, throwing, throwing him onto the barricade. Uh, he hit an elbow drop on Rusev, uh, but Rusev turned it around when he hit a drop kick on the Big Show. And the match ended when Big Show went for a elbow drop from the second rope, but Rusev got out of the way, and then Rusev locked on the accolade. And Big Show still wasn't tapping out, uh, Rusev had it on, and then we see Mark Henry uh, running down the ramp, and he's trying to, like, I guess, encourage the Big Show or support the Big Show. And then he decides to get on the apron, and that's when Rusev gets up, and he punches Mark Henry off the apron, and then he goes ahead, puts back uh, the accolade on the Big Show. And then shortly after, Mark Henry gets up, and he gets back in the ring, and he goes ahead and clotheslines, uh, or clotheslines the back of Rusev. And then Rusev rolls out the ring, and Mark Henry checks on the Big Show. Of course, the match now ended by disqualification. Rusev wins by DQ because of Mark Henry's interference. So... You know, I was kind of right. You know, I said that Henry would cost Big Show the matchup after Big Show's comments, but we didn't see a heel turn. But he did, you know, kind of cost Big Show the matchup since it ended by DQ. But anyways, uh, he picks up Show or helps him up, and then Show doesn't look too happy about, you know, Henry causing the DQ there. Uh, but he then kind of forgives Mark Henry, and then they decide to get out of the ring and kind of, you know, surround uh, Rusev or give him nowhere to go. Mark Henry is on the left side, Big Show's on the right side, and then Rusev goes ahead and tries to attack Mark Henry, but uh, after he attacks Mark Henry, once he turns around to focus on the Big Show, Big Show knocks out Rusev. And then after that, uh, Henry helps Show to the back, and Rusev is just there, you know, knocked out. Afterwards, we got Sheamus versus The Miz, and uh, once again, Damon Mizdow was doing a great job as The Miz's stunt double. Uh, you know, there was a bunch of funny moments there. He was imitating The Miz, everything The Miz did on the outside of the ring, even headlocks, uh, even, you know, getting punched and all that. He would sell how The Miz would sell. It was great. Uh, so anyways, uh, Sheamus actually ends up losing the match when Damon Mizdow kind of, you know, uh, led a helping head in Sheamus getting counted out. Sheamus and The Miz were on the outside. Well, actually, before Sheamus got out of the ring, The Miz was on the outside of the ring holding his knee, and then David Mizdow right away ran towards The Miz, and he fell down and sold his knee just like The Miz. And then Sheamus gets out, and then he looks at both of them, and then they both crawl under the ring, and so Sheamus pulls Mizdow out from under the apron first, and then he tries to pull The Miz from under the apron, but The Miz is like, uh, he, he gets like, I guess, too far away from Sheamus. And then Mizdow gets up, so Sheamus uh, hits him with a bro kick. And then he tries to look for The Miz once again under the ring, but he can't find The Miz. And then all of a sudden we see The Miz on the other side of the ring. He gets back in the ring, and at this point the referee is like counting at... Uh, I believe he's at 8, so then Sheamus sees that The Miz is in the ring, and then the referee uh, counts 9, 10, and it's too late for Sheamus, and he gets counted out, so The Miz wins the match, and then The Miz is in the ring bragging about beating Sheamus for a second time, and then Sheamus uh, pissed off, he runs towards The Miz inside the ring, but The Miz gets out of the ring and runs towards the stage, and Miz now catches up to him, and they look at Sheamus from the stage. Following that, we get a backstage segment with the Total Divas and Nikki Leaks, who's the celebrity guest host for tonight's Raw. And then we get a matchup between the Total Divas. Uh, the face team is Rebella, Bella, Naomi, and Natalia, and they're facing off against Cameron, Nikki Bella, and Summer Rae, and Nikki Leaks. Uh, I mean, I, no, wait, wait a minute, it's Nini Leaks. My bad. Nini Leaks comes out uh, to support them. And uh, she's at ringside along with Rosa. Uh, she just watches the matchup and uh, I guess is like a cheerleader for the face team. 
And the face team ends up winning when Nikki Bella goes ahead and tries to go for the torture rack on Brie Bella, but Brie Bella backflips off of Nikki's shoulders and she kicks her in the gut and then follows it up with the face buster finisher and covers her for the win. After the match, they celebrate with Nini Leaks, and that is it for that. And then we get Renee Young interviewing John Cena about his match against Dean Ambrose, and after that, we get a promo this time for Bray Wyatt. So they showed a promo for Luke Harper, and then the week after, Eric Rowan, and now this time, it was for Bray Wyatt. And then on commentary, Michael Cole, after seeing that video package of that promo video, he says, damn, you know, Luke Harper is now, well, he didn't say damn, but he said, so now Luke Harper is on the loose, Eric Rowan is on the loose, and Bray Harper is on the loose. He said Bray Harper instead of Bray Wyatt. The authority then comes out to watch the Dean Ambrose-John Cena contract on a pull match, and then Seth Rollins also comes out, followed by Randy, and I thought that was it. I thought after Randy was going to be it, but actually Kane also comes out, so they'll come out to watch the match of the entire authority. And then, you know, John Cena comes out, followed by Ambrose. And right from the get-go, they tried to go for the contract. Um, at multiple times in the matchup, Dean Ambrose, instead of going for the contract, he decided to go after John Cena. At, at some point, he had Cena on the outside of the ring, but instead of going for the contract, he decided to go for a suicide dive on Cena. And then after that, he went ahead and suplexed John Cena all the way on the stage, like up on the stage. And then he walked back in the ring and tried to go for the contract, but John Cena stopped him with an electric chair. Not an actual electric chair, but, you know, the wrestling move where he puts, you know, his opponent on his shoulders. Uh, and then, you know, drops them. So anyways, um, a little bit later in the match... Ambrose once again, hit, once again hits a suicide dive on Cena, and then um, he's on the outside, and he like gets face to face with Randy, and Randy's like yelling at him, and Ambrose then decides to punch Randy, so he punches Randy, and <laughs> then Randy quickly gets up, and John Cena comes from behind and attacks Ambrose, and then Randy's like, yeah, Cena, get him, get him. And then Cena grabs Ambrose and he throws him onto Randy, Seth Rollins, and Kane. And then he gets back in the ring and goes after the contract on the pole. But then Randy gets in the ring and stops John Cena and he starts attacking Cena. And then uh, Ambrose gets back in the ring, but Seth Rollins and Kane both attack Ambrose. Eventually, Ambrose and Cena get the better of, uh, I guess, the authorities, guys, and they take him out, and, you know, Ambrose has already, you know, gotten rid of Seth Rollins and Kane, uh, so they're no longer attacking Ambrose, but Kane is still in the ring, and Cena decides to go for the attitude adjustment on Kane. While he's doing that, well, we don't see Ambrose anymore, but now Ambrose is on the same turnbuckle that the pole is on, and John Cena is on the com on the complete other side of the ring. So Cena hits the attitude adjustment on Kane, and then once he turns around, he sees that Ambrose is right, you know, uh, like in front of the pole, and he's just he just needs to grab, you know, the the contract. So Cena, you know, he was about to run towards Ambrose, but then he realizes that you know it's too late. Ambrose just has to grab, you know, the contract. So he just stays there, and Ambrose taunts him by doing the "You can't see me" taunt. And he grabs the contract and wins the match, which means that at Hell in a Cell, it will be Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. And it's going to be John Cena versus Randy inside Hell in a Cell 2. So then John Cena actually claps uh, for, I guess, Dean Ambrose's victory, uh, or applauds uh, for Ambrose's victory. And then Seth Rollins is on the stage. He's looking on with the authority next to him. And then Randy, he's on the apron thinking about getting the ring to fight with Cena to get some payback. But he just stays on the apron and then eventually gets off the apron. And Ambrose is in the ring staring down Seth Rollins who's on the stage. And then Seth Rollins music hits and, they're, and they still have like the stare down with Ambrose in the ring and Seth Rollins on the stage. And that was it for the show. So, uh, what did I think about tonight's Raw? I thought it was a better Raw than last week's show. 
I mean, last week had, you know, a big return in The Rock's return. That was really cool. But overall, the show last week, uh, I didn't think, you know, it wasn't a really entertaining show in my opinion. This week's show, though, I thought was a lot better. Uh, you know, just, you know, from the matches, the segments, uh, there was a lot less pointless segments. Like last week, you know, the the segment with the two chicks and, and Adam Rose, I, I still I still think that's a, that was a really bad segment. Uh, the, you know, and also the El Torito versus uh, Hornswoggle match. Uh, there was none of that this week. Uh, there was no, you know, Adam Rose segment with, I, I guess, a guest host. I mean, there was a guest host, but, you know, she only she was only there for, uh, I guess, at ringside for one match, and that was it. And, um, you know, match quality-wise, I thought the matches this time around were better. Uh, you know, we also had more important matches. Uh, Randy versus Dolph, that was a great match. And Seth Rollins versus Jack Swagger, they had a lot, of, a lot to follow up after the Dolph and Randy match, but they had a good matchup too. And also the main event, it was, you know, a match I was invested in. Uh, it was a ma it was a main event, a much better main event than the past couple of weeks, where we constantly saw. You know, just Dean Ambrose and Cena versus, like, Kane or, you know, Seth Rollins or Randy. You know, a combination of all those three. Uh, it felt like we had seen those for a bunch of weeks. And we did see, you know, those guys face off in a bunch of, like, a variety of matches. And sometimes it was Ambrose and Cena versus, like, Rollins, Kane, and uh, Randy. Sometimes it was just a regular tag team match. It was a variation, you know, uh, involving those superstars this time around. Uh, while Kane, Seth Rollins, and Randy were at ringside watching the match, it was actually Cena versus Ambrose this time. And we had an important match as the main event. A match, of course, that determines what we're going to see at the next pay-per-view, Hell in a Cell. And, yeah, I'm, I'm also happy with the outcome. I'm really happy that Ambrose won and that now we're getting Ambrose versus Rollins inside the Hell in a Cell, which I think was the match that, you know, should take place. Uh, I feel Ambrose versus Rollins uh, makes more sense. And it's just the more fitting match type to be in the Hell in a Cell, uh, especially after, you know, Seth Rollins turning on Dean Ambrose and costing him the money in the bank a lot of match. On top of that, you know, um, screwing Ambrose uh, from the Lumberjack match or, you know, beating him in the Lumberjack match due to interference. And Ambrose just not being able to get his hands, you know, on Seth Rollins and, you know, get a win and not get, have somebody interfere or something like that. And then also, of course, Seth Rollins uh, putting Ambrose through the, uh, the bricks and all of that. It just makes sense for it to be Seth Rollins versus Ambrose, much more than Cena versus uh, Seth Rollins inside the cell. I understand that, you know, Seth Rollins cast John Cena his championship match, but that's one thing. Seth Rollins cast Dean Ambrose the Money in the Bank match. Uh, he cost him the Lumberjack match. I mean, they were against each other at, you know, uh, SummerSlam, and the only reason why Seth Rollins won was because... You know, Kane's interference, and of course, we can't forget that Seth Rollins turned his back on Dean Ambrose and hit him with a bunch of chair shots, and he put him through the bricks, all, all that stuff. Uh, so, like I said, happy with the outcome. As far as Cena versus Randy goes inside Hell in a Cell, uh, this is going to be the second time, actually, they, they face off inside Hell in a Cell. I think the first time was, it was either in 2009 or 2010. I'm not sure which it was. I think maybe 2000, 2009, but I'm not 100% positive. So either 09 or 10, doesn't matter. Uh, bottom line, they have faced each other before. Uh, one thing that, that is interesting, though, is when Randy proposed the matchup, he said that uh, he wants to face off against whoever, of course, you know, doesn't win the contract kind of pole match in the main event of Hell in a Cell. So I'm wondering if the Randy versus John Cena match closes out the show, or if Ambrose versus Seth Rollins closes out the show. I wouldn't be surprised if Cena and Randy close out the show, because Cena is involved in the matchup, and Randy did break up the facts, or you know did say that you know he will he wants to face off against the person that loses the match in the main event. But at the same time, I uh, I prefer Ambrose versus Seth Rollins to close out the show. But, you know, Hell in a Cell is two weeks away. We'll see, uh, you know, which match closes out. Also, when it comes to Rusev and Big Show and Mark Henry, 
I think tonight was the start of maybe a slow build towards Mark Henry turning heel. Uh, last week, was it last week or the week before, when he, fit, when he took on Bo Dallas and after the matchup he attacked Bo Dallas backstage, I thought that might have been a heel turn um, by Mark Henry, but it, it obviously wasn't. And then tonight, when in Big Show in his interview, he said that, you know, he said no off, no offense to Mark Henry, but, you know, if you're going to put uh, 3.80 million people, you know, be you know on your back, uh, that people that are counting on you, you put them on the world's largest athletes back. You know, when he said that, I was like, I think we might see Mark Henry turn heel tonight and cause Big Show the matchup. And he did cause Big Show the matchup, but he did it in a way that... You know, it's, it's not necessarily a heel way, uh, but it, it is something that could lead to Mark Henry eventually turning heel. And as far as highlights for tonight's show, I'd say the Dolph versus Randy match and Damon Mizdow's performance. Actually, Damon Mizdow's performance, you know, every time is, you know, one of the highlights in my opinion. And Dean Ambrose winning the contract on a pole match. I'm looking forward to Ambrose versus Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. So, as far as the rating for tonight's Raw, I'd give it a 7.5 on 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, as always, can click that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. With that said, I'm up, guys. See ya.